This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Sony just took a whole new approach to what a standard zoom lens looks like. So this is the new 20 to 70 F4. In my opinion, it's kind of like what the 24 to 105 F4 is, but just going in the opposite direction, you know? So instead of giving you more reach, you get about a 10% increase in the field of view on the wide end, which is arguably just as useful as 105 is when compared to 70 millimeter. Again, that just depends on what your needs are. You know, at first, I'm not gonna lie, like I wrote this lens off because it was an F4. And the fact that there's a Tamron 20 to 40 F2.8 that exists, but thinking about what the strategy was behind this lens, why did Sony make this lens? So they definitely took a unique approach to it, I think. So most lens manufacturers will sacrifice the wide end of the zoom, right? to make it more affordable, to make it more compact, kind of like the Tamron 20 to 75, the Sigma 20 to 70. And, you know, here you do lose a little bit of light. You got the F4, but you gain some on the wide end, okay? But you still maintain that 70 millimeter, which would be good for taking pictures of people, humans, which the Tamron 20 to 40 F2.8 would not be ideal for. All right, so what about the image quality? Just like any other lens, you know what? Actually, let me just switch to the lens. I think it makes more sense if I'm filming with it first, and then you could just see what it looks like. So right now I'm actually filming on the 20 millimeter 1.8 prime lens. 20 millimeter is my favorite focal length for that vlogging distance, almost handheld. I have T-Rex arms, but you know, it's, it's, I feel like it's good because then you could crop in a little bit. And this is with the 20 to 70 F4. See how much light you lose though with that F4? I just went from ISO 640 to 1250 just to even out the exposure. Just like any other lens in coming out in 2023 that hovers around one, especially the $1,000 range, you're gonna get good quality, especially paired up with a good sensor and you have good lighting. The lighting is the great equalizer. You're gonna get great quality. I shot portraits with this lens because that's what I mainly do. Although that is not like, the primary, you know, focus of this lens. I did that so I could see what the quality looks like. Is it sharp? And you know, guess what guys? It performed pretty good. There's not much to report back on the image quality side. Um, I did, and I'll try to avoid doing any lens comparisons, but I did do it. I compared it against the Tamron 17 to 28, which is it's one of it's one of the best budget wide ultra wide angle zooms out there. And it's one of my favorites. I shot both of them at 20 millimeter at F4. This lens is not only sharper, but also it maintains better contrast in the image than the Tamron. But when compared to the 2470 2.8 G Master, which they're, you know, they're not in the same league, this is a G lens, the 24 to 70 G Master was much crisper. At the end of the day, using it like I would any other lens, I was very pleased, very happy with the resolution that I got paired up with the A7R5 when I was shooting portraits. I also took my Volkswagen Golf R to the Forest Preserve to take some pictures, mainly because, you know, I got the got the carbon fiber hatch installed. So I got the hood and the, the trunk, the hatch carbon fiber, going for that whole Panda look on a white car. It's something that I always wanted. So anyways, I gotta go flex a little bit, gotta go take some photos. And, um, you know, again, I use the lens on the Sony a7R5. It's just, it, it the images looked good. You know, there's nothing like, I, that stood out to me about the, the images. I, I felt that they were plenty sharp and you know, it's not, I could have done, I could have totally done that with a 2470, but every lens has like a small sacrifice. Image quality isn't one for me on this one. I think that it's a good like eight out of 10. When testing out the autofocus of the 20 to 70, this is where I started to, you know, feel some of the hype. I started to get a little bit more excited because it does an amazing job. And I'm talking about video for this one. So for example, 24 to 70 G Master 2.8 lens on an A7R5, okay? This is what I was doing. If I rack focus in video and I, I tap to focus and I rack focus on whatever it is on the 2470, whatever I'm focusing on is gonna be slightly blurred. As I do that, it's, it's gonna struggle to maintain focus with the 20 to 70. All the way from 20 to 70, whatever I'm focusing on, as I rack zoom, it'll, it's able to maintain focus really, really well and just stick on that subject or object. This lens is optimized for that. On the topic of focus, it also has, it does a really good job of controlling focus breathing, which leads, in, which leads me to believe that this 
could very well be a, a really good lens for video for the people that don't you know want a little bit more on the wider end you know and and you got all the way to 70 you know on top of that if you go APS-C crop you get even more and then clear image zoom man you go past 100 easily on this thing i want to take a second to thank today's sponsor squarespace if you have been looking to start a website blog or an online store you need to check them out asap Every entrepreneur needs a website, and with Squarespace, you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start. It's so easy to use. They have 24-7 customer support. If you ever get bored of the look, you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store, like I did, where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you want to check them out for yourself, use the coupon code MANNY, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. You know, the funny part about this lens is that it's meant to be that do it all lens, but at the same time, I'm struggling to figure out who this lens is for considering all the other options that are out there right now. According to Sony, this is going to be a great lens from like from vlogging to portraits, you know what I'm saying? And everything else in between landscape, video, everything. Okay. So first let me touch on vlogging really fast. This style of vlogging here, walking around with a camera in your hand, I feel like it's kind of dead. I don't see a lot of people doing it. And I think that a lot of people don't care too much about it anymore. You know, that was like maybe a thing that was in like four years ago. Modern day vlogging is like sitting at a desk with the camera, maybe like at arm's length and I have T-Rex arms. Well, let's just pretend, okay, like I'm this far away from the camera or whatever. 20 millimeters actually does make a pretty big difference. And that's why I shoot 20 millimeter all the time on all my videos. I'm an FX3 because I do like having a wider field of view and I can always just crop in a little bit if I want. Right, so look, I'm gonna go to 24. So this is 24 millimeter. I've always felt like it's a little too tight, especially for holding in my hand right here in front of me. And especially if you like, let's say you put stabilization on, you're walking, and it's really gonna get tight. I'm gonna zoom out to 20. No, wrong way, damn it. All right, here's 24. So I'm gonna zoom out to, this is 24. And that's 20. You know, that's that's a pretty good difference there, I would say. Um, for portrait photographers, uh, this is not the first lens I would pick up to do portraits, but it's the point is, is that it's very capable of doing that, right? Unlike the competition, the Tamron 20 to 40, F2.8, I say that that lens is definitely geared more toward video. You do have the advantage of the F2.8, but you lose out on a lot of that range. And all their wide, ultra wide angle zooms, 1728, 1635, you don't have the ability to kind of go and use the lens for telephoto stuff. Personally, I think that this lens is catered a slightly more toward a videographer, simply because of the autofocus performance, you know, when you're rack zooming and its ability to control focus breathing, I think, and, and then the F4 aperture, you know, because for the most part, most people, you know, stop their lens down anyway for video on a full frame sensor because it's harder to keep track or keep focus on something when shooting a wide aperture on for video, the, no, no matter how good autofocus is. Is it for me though? Probably not because I already have so many different lenses that are meant, you know, like I got specialized portrait photography lenses. I've got video lenses. If you get a lens like this, you're just going to be struggling with that F4. That's the only downside so far, in my opinion the F4, but I think that's that's a given. That's why I wasn't excited about it at first. But it does hit a specific, it does hit this range that's kind of, it's kind of unique. So I think that's all I got.